Another story we have, this is kind of a kind of a bummer. So last week, I don't, I'm sure you guys probably all saw about this. One of the big stories in the news was that the Notre Dame uh, Cathedral in France uh, caught on fire due to some construction and uh, suffered some severe damages. Um, this building has been around for centuries, forever. Um, I think it's one of the oldest buildings. Yeah. One, it's in the very, world. Very, very old very gorgeous both inside and out and um ubisoft came out and announced that they are going to be donating uh about five hundred sixty-five thousand dollars, uh five hundred thousand euros as what the total was to aid the restoration and reconstruction efforts for notre dame um notre dame i don't know how you pronounce that I probably yeah, that's right you guys that's better that time yeah um, so in addition to that, they're also giving away Assassin's Creed Unity for free. So if you missed out on that game, a lot of people didn't like it at first. I think people kind of grew to like it a little bit more later on, but it took place in France and they actually have a very faithful reconstruction of Notre Dame inside this. And apparently there's stories that I've read that they're actually going to use um, some of these games to use as reference points for the rebuild in a way because they are so meticulously re- recreated. That's cool. Before this thing broke down, that right. they have this stuff to reference and use. Right. Um, so from now and through April 25th, which by the time you listen to this podcast, you'll have two days left. You can get Unity for free. And uh, once you download it, it's yours to keep forever. Um, and uh, that's pretty awesome. It's on PC, I believe, specifically. Well, I might have to do that then. Me too. Yeah, because I mean, I heard it's actually a pretty, pretty good game. And this is like After before the they like changed everything. So, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah I heard very they, bad things. I mean, no, before they changed uh, like the fundamentals of Assassin's mm-hmm. Creed to make it more like RPG focused gotcha. and stuff like that. So this is gotcha. like the last game that they had before they like switched gears and stuff. Well, hopefully all the bugs are gone. Yeah, no, I think I think they are, but um. So it's pretty cool to see that they're uh, they're doing this. I mean, that was a cool effort for them to to I think donate to it because I think it's a fantastic building. Like whether you're religious or not, you know, I mean, it's a Catholic church and stuff like that. But I just, as far as architecture goes, it's just I mean, it's a part of history. You know, it's it's been there for for years and years and years, and it's uh, I mean, it's a it's a staple. It's a icon in Paris and in yes. in, in their in their history and their culture. And I think it's the fact that they did this is a, is a pretty cool thing. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> who'd have thought games would have been such, so good in a, di- in a different way. Yeah. No, Just for playing sure. Them. Yeah. So in addition to that, what was kind of interesting is that, you know, we've been hearing about all these, uh, these games getting like review bomb, like after they go to Epic games or whatever, right, like right. You know, Metro and Borderlands and whatnot. Assassin's Creed Unity is getting the opposite. It's getting reverse review bomb with positivity since this happened. So, um, you know, it was pretty negative. People didn't like it with a lot of the stuff, mixed reviews, um, many of them posted back in the day, but recently since they made it free and after what they did with Notre Dame and everything, um, people have been reviewing it and it's actually, um, in the past 24 hours, it's gotten a lot of awesome reviews. One person said, I played the game after Ubisoft has fixed all of its issues. That being said, the positivity brought by this game in light of the tragic event with the Notre Dame Cathedral makes me proud to have played this game. Another person said, quote, I hope this game will be able to help the reparation of Notre Dame uh, although it's not a good game for everybody, it seems like, but Ubisoft paid much efforts to this, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, uh, it's doing better on Steam because of this. So that <laughs> was kind good. of cool to I, see. I'm happy for them. The opposite effect happening. As so. opposed to Gearbox and Randy Pitchford attacking fans and stuff. Yeah, that was kind of messed up. But <sighs> We didn't really talk about that, did we? No, not really. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, Randy Pitchford was basically saying, like, y'all are crazy, like, you where we stand by our stance and because you guys are arguing about it, it makes us feel even better about well, maybe we should give the clear picture that they're going specifically or they're launching on on epic game store first people got upset so they review bomb borderlands 2 and then randy pitchford's like well maybe we should just do all of our games on epic store because we hate steam for all the stuff that's happening and it's just like look people need a place to do some public outcry because they're upset about your decisions that's what it comes to. And then you get good PR like this, and then you get good review bombs. So yeah. do good things. Make the yep, fans yep. happy. 
Yeah. I they, don't know. Yeah. I mean, he didn't say they don't like steam. He said they just didn't like, he was well, they're upset unappreciative with steam. of the fans for doing what they did. Well, he said he's upset with steam because the way that they have implemented, because review bombs used to be a problem, but actually steam has fixed it. And I guess he doesn't know that. So you can actually take out. So steam goes in, looks at right. if there's a bunch of people reviewing the, at the same time. And if it's very if it's negative, then they have you know they go in there and be like yeah, from this point this out. time yeah doesn't affect the score right if you don't want it to, and so apparently Randy Pitchford didn't know about that or something. Wait, why does he not like that though? That's a good thing for him. Yeah, but he didn't he doesn't know that or something because the way that he his comment was was he doesn't like Steam and he'd rather do he's going to talk to the people to actually uh, at Gearbox yeah Here, let's just look up the quote yeah I don't think that's entirely accurate because there it was is. i it think it was uh i mean that just doesn't make sense though like why would you why would you hate on steam for that because steam's doing you a, a good thing not a bad thing okay no so like reviewing this again like you're actually right about this like he really didn't um you know understand how this works so he's reacting to the fact that so what ended up happening was so i was thinking that he re, they review bombed other things but basically what they did was they review bombed the older games borderlands one and two and people review bombed it so he was reacting to the fact that they did that but i don't think he fully understood or realized that uh steam had already taken care of this problem recently and put in a system in place that although it will get review bomb, those reviews eventually get mitigated and taken out and adjusted to op topic reviews essentially. And it doesn't affect the final score. So he responded to it without realizing that, Oh yeah, this does affect the score. So it's kind of weird and crazy, but I mean, people need a way to get, to get their voices heard. Yeah. And sometimes this is the only way to do it because if they don't, Who's going to listen to him? Yeah, no, I agree. So, and, and I mean, I still kind of defend. I mean, I think the way that people are reacting to the Epic Games exclusivity is a little bit over the top, but I don't think that it's unwarranted because, like, the other day, for example, I was looking for, I was going to go buy World War Z, right? And I didn't realize it was an Epic Game Store exclusive. So I'm sitting there and I'm looking through Steam. I'm like, it's not here. So I go on Epic Game Store because I was like, well, it's probably an exclusive. So I go in there and there's no way to leave reviews. There is no easy way to see like a list of screenshots and things like that. I mean, yeah, they have the screenshots laid out at the bottom and stuff like that, but you can't blow them up bigger. You can only see them in like a, slot, a carousel and they have more down below that. So there's a lot of issues in the way. And there's no wish list. Like, so if I'm like, I want to buy this game later on, but I don't want to buy it right now. You can't like, there's so many features that are just missing that should be there already. And I agree with that, like completely. Like there's this software as I think it looks nice from a UI perspective, but it's fundamentally flawed in that there's so many features, quality of life features that are missing from it that just should be there by default. Um, yeah. So kind of sucks. It does suck. Yeah. I just want choice and it pisses me off that I can't have it. Yeah. It's pissing me off so much. I'm getting Borderlands 3 for PS4. I'm not playing it on PC. Oh shit, really? Yeah, I'm not playing it on PC. Damn I, it. I'm just I'm not doing it. I've supported it. So good. Enough. I'm not doing it. It looks so good. I made up my mind. I mean, you're still given, but I mean, that doesn't like you're still getting it, so it doesn't really solve the problem. Well, Epic Game Store won't take any of that cut. Well, that's true, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I get it. Steam needs to do something to kind of bring some of this, some of these games back, but I just can't. I can't support them. 